More than 1,000 people jammed the Macomb Center for the Performing Arts. To hear Macomb County Executive Mark Hackles, first State of the County Address. Spotlighting Hackles' presentation was a high-tech video program designed to emphasize the county's many strengths and the way it plans to overcome the challenges facing its more than 840,000 residents in the coming years. Hackle also demonstrated that he is more than ready to lead the county during these difficult economic times through a vision and confidence that is now needed more than ever. You think you know Macomb County? You say we're blue collar and tough? Yeah, that's us. You say we use our hands to build America's cars, trucks, and tanks. Yeah, that's us too. But we're more than that. We're more than our jobs. We're more than what we build. And we're more than what you say we are. Yeah, many of our colors are blue. But so are the ribbons our schools are awarded. The same schools that churn out some of America's finest doctors, lawyers, physicists, and engineers that not only work here, but play here. Their yachts dot our lakes, their golf balls, our fairways. In an ever-changing world, there must always be a constant, a place to call home. I live in Macomb County. It is my home, and it is constant. Constantly changing, constantly evolving, and constantly elevating the world and the people that live in it. So if you think Macomb County is just a place where we build things, you're right. But what we're building is more better. Ladies and gentlemen, here tonight to present his first State of the County, please help me welcome resident and lifelong advocate of Macomb County, your executive, Mr. Mark Hackle. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Macomb County. On behalf of 841,000 residents, I want to thank all of you who are here today, and those of you who are listening elsewhere, for being a part of the first ever State of the County Address under our new county executive form of government. A new Macomb is taking form. It's a smaller, more efficient, and less costly form of county government dedicated to public service. It's a partnership with 27 townships, cities and villages, a responsible contributor to the greater Detroit metropolitan region. Macomb, it's the fastest growing county in the state of Michigan, a place where generations of hardworking people want to live, a reinvented manufacturing powerhouse that doesn't just make things, but makes things better. It's a world-class hub of defense and advanced manufacturing, and a place of incredible opportunity to grow a new blue economy along a treasure of freshwater shoreline. This is an extraordinary moment for me, to stand before you as your first county executive and to report on the state of Macomb, and to express the pride that we all share for this special place we live, play, raise a family, work, invest, and grow our business, the place that we all call Macomb County. In the next 30 minutes, what I want to share with you is how Macomb County government is working together for the people of the fastest growing county in the state, how the traditional manufacturing backbone in over 18,000 small businesses are investing and reinventing themselves as world leader in automotive technology and becoming the world capital of defense and advanced manufacturing, and how our unique freshwater resource can help spur a new blue economy and emerge as Macomb's unique contributor to the quality of life in the metropolitan Detroit region. Let's start with working together to grow our county. As a kid growing up, I graduated in 1980. The late 70s, early 80s was a difficult time, too, to find a job. I had to seek employment elsewhere. I left Macomb County for a very short period of time. 
went to Southern California. And the reason I went there was to find a job. And I found one because there was a housing boom in construction. I landed there and found a job immediately. I was making money hand over fist, working Monday through Friday, actually six, seven days a week, sun up to sundown. I had more money than I knew what to do with that at that time. Within the first two months, I even bought a car. But you know what? It wasn't home. It wasn't Macomb. It didn't take much longer after that, so within that four-month period, I came back to Macomb County, my home. I took a job two days later as a busboy at a Ramshorn, making minimum wage. But you know what? I was happy as can be. And in spite of our economy then and now, Macomb is a place where people want to live. Nearly 53,000 people moved to Macomb County in the last decade. And if you do the math, that's 14 people a day over a 10-year period. It's almost twice as many as Kent County, which was the second largest growth county in the state of Michigan. I think it reinforces the fact that Macomb is a place with a value-added proposition, affordable housing, safe neighborhoods, and good quality of education in our schools. It's also a good place for business to invest. And I'll talk more about that in just a moment. On January 1st, it became my responsibility to define the role of county executive under our new charter. First, I want to thank the county voters for their support in approving this new form of government. And I also got to give thanks, because during that process, it was somewhat of a challenge, to the countywide elected officials, Tony Morocco, Ted Wabi, Eric Smith, Carmela Seva, and our new sheriff, Tony Wickersham, for their support during these past 11 months. And I also want to thank the Board of Commissioners, led by their chair, Kathy Vosberg, for their input and willingness to work together on some of these issues. But my very first task was to assemble a team. And this executive team, I wanted some hardworking, experienced professionals with the highest level of moral and ethical standards. With the four positions that I was given, I brought in an expert group of assistants. Mark Delden, your assistant county executive, the deputy county executive. The other three assistant executives, Al Lorenzo, Melissa Roy, and Pam Lavers. I imposed the same standards for the five department heads that I got to appoint, all of whom were unanimously confirmed by our Board of Commissioners. Next, I set new policies for fiscal transparency. My goal is to make Macomb County globally transparent. What do I mean by that? Anyone who has access to the internet can go to our website and look at the county budget in its entirety. Every check that is written, who it's written to and how much it's written for, the salary ranges of employees, and every major contract, whether it's written by the, or actually signed by the executive and or the board of commissioners, based upon the requirements of charter and or statute, will be available as to who won that bid and how much that bid was for. And following the governor's lead on financial dashboards, we signed on to the Munitrex financial dashboard system. We were the first county in the state of Michigan to implement the dashboard in a very comprehensive format. Not only do we check our performance and put our performances online, but we compare ourselves to other similar units of government. In the budget, the budget is a critically important part of my job. On day one, we inherited a $13.6 million revenue gap for 2011 and a $23 million gap for 2012. With the assistance of my newly appointed finance director, we instituted a new budget process. We engaged the Board of Commissioners, and they were willingly engaged in this process, and the various department heads asking for consolidations and restructuring. And there were significant contributions made by the countywide elected officials here in Macomb County, and as well, the judges. But I really want to take this opportunity and thank our employees. Our employees here in Macomb County are not only dedicated public servants, but they've also made significant contributions to help become part of the solution. Every day our employees come to work willing to get the job done, but are also willing to make difficult sacrifices and continue to bargain in good faith. I'm proud to say that my recommended budget for 2012 is the first budget in many years that does not require or use any fund balance.
We are equally proud of the fact that Macomb County has a AAA bond rating. We're one of only three Michigan counties to have that, and in fact, one of only 67 in the entire country. Looking ahead to 2013, we are forecasting a $16 million budget gap. But with the budget process that we've instituted, I believe we are better prepared to address that gap. How so? We've replaced the traditional single year view with a two year forecast. Gives us an opportunity to start working on solutions now. And we are. We have also extended trend projections to three to five years out. And our goal, once again, in working with the board and the countywide elected officials and the judges, is to try to see if in 2013 we can avoid using fund balances then as well. I'm proud to report that in just our first year, Macomb County government is more professional and transparent. It is smaller and better organized. It is more efficient and proactive. And without question, it costs less. My responsibility is to the people of Macomb County. Yet we share the benefits and fortunes of being part of a greater metropolitan Detroit region. The city of Detroit is the urban center of this metropolitan region. We know there's going to be some difficult days ahead, but I'm here to tell you that regional cooperation is not just a buzzword or a soundbite. Over the past several months, there have been many opportunities for me to have been engaged with the regional leaders. And I'm grateful for the leadership out of the city of Detroit. Boy, as a kid growing up, it was interesting. I saw this man's abilities and his leadership skills on the court. But more important to me was the fact that this guy was a role model on and off the court. Having been engaged in his last 11 months directly with this individual, I can tell you the mayor of the city of Detroit, this new mayor and the way he thinks isn't just about what the suburbs can do for the city but what it is the city can do and how it fits into the region. And he has been a true friend and a partner of Macomb County. And I can think of no better example than by the fact for the first time ever for a state of the county address, the mayor of the city of Detroit is present here today. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm Macomb County welcome to the mayor of the city of Detroit, Mr. Dave Bing. So the state of Macomb County in 2011, it's a rapidly growing population. It's a solid beginning to a new form of county government. And it's a growing foundation of regional cooperation and collaboration. But there's another important Macomb County benchmark. In just the past 11 months, there have been some dramatic investments in our manufacturing infrastructure. I was a kid that grew up in the city of Warren. And those of you that may be around that same time frame can recognize, remember, that iconic symbol. It was that tank on Van Dyke. And as you drive up and down, and I'd see that tank as a little boy driving up there, I never really thought or really understood what went into designing, manufacturing, building that tank, or the end product, really where it ended up. I only really thought about, how do I get in that thing and drive it up Van Dyke Avenue? <laughs> well, the special pride we play we have here in Macomb County for the role we played in that arsenal of democracy. I think it's interesting that today marks in remembrance the 70th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. And I think it would be fitting if you would join me in thanking the generations of service men and women who protected our freedoms back then and who are today protecting our freedoms as well. World War II brought defense to our automotive manufacturing infrastructure. Manufacturing investment continues at an astonishing rate. In just this year, the automotive defense and advanced manufacturing segments have invested $2.6 billion here in Macomb County. That's $2.6 billion since January 1st in Macomb County in just three sectors alone. Think about these investments. Think about Chrysler, the Sterling Heights assembly plant, the partnership that came together with the city officials, the UAW, Chrysler, and the other elected leaders at the state and federal level. They brought that thing back from the dead. It was not going to be a part of Macomb County's economic opportunities, the regions, the state of Michigan's. It was gone. But because of the efforts and the work that was put into it, there has now been a commitment of a billion dollars of investment right here in Macomb County. There's a state-of-the-art paint plant being built right now as we sit here. 
and 3,000 new jobs. Ford kicked in another half a billion dollars in new investments. And GM, they added another 465 million. If we don't just make amazing vehicles here in Macomb County, we make them better. Think about facilities like General Motors, Warren Tech Center, the Ford's test track up in Romeo, or the Army's TACOM in Tardec. They put Macomb County at the hub of the automotive and defense technology innovations. Did you know that 62% of all U.S. defense contracts awarded to Michigan are actually awarded to Macomb County? 62% of them right here that come to Michigan are in Macomb County. That's 7% of all U.S. defense spending. I want to thank the automotive big three, General Dynamics, BAE Systems, as well as many other businesses for their continued confidence and their enormous investment here in Macomb County. Supporting 18,000 Macomb small businesses is a top priority. The county's planning and economic development department is doing an exceptional job. And in fact, in 2011, they helped companies attract investment of over $55 million. That's 1,700 new and retained small business jobs. And because of the committed relationship I have with Governor Snyder, and by committed meeting, I'm committed to working with anyone who wants to add economic opportunities and value to Macomb County. This committed relationship gave us the opportunity here in Macomb County to become the first county with an MEDC development specialist working in Macomb County and for Macomb County. But tonight, tonight I get the opportunity, and I'm excited to announce that Governor Snyder and the CEO of the MEDC, Mike Finney, have committed to assigning the director of the MEDC Defense Center to Macomb County to help us grow our vision to become the defense capital of the world. We have partnered with Oakland University and Sterling Heights in support of the Macomb OU Incubator. It's called Velocity. It's already working to foster innovation with dozens of small businesses. And I also want to thank the publisher of the Macomb Daily, Kevin Hazenbrock. He kind of helped to co-host the first of a series of business forums to help make sure that we're staying on the right track. And I also want to thank the Chamber Alliance, Macomb County's Chamber Alliance, for helping us support and bring those businesses to us so we can have this dialogue. Because the job of government is not to create jobs, but to create an environment where business can thrive and prosper. And how better to do that than to engage business in the conversation with government? And we often think of economic investment only in terms of dollars and cents. But our unique educational resource at all levels play a key role in the vitality in Macomb County. As a proud graduate of Macomb Community College, I am pleased today to pay tribute to Macomb's premier institution of higher education. Today, no longer you just start at MCC and then go somewhere else. Now you can earn a bachelor's degree or study medicine right here in Macomb County. There's an immense opportunity for anyone who wants to kind of find themselves and try to figure out where do they really want to go in life. I'm undecided on my career, but here I've been talking to counselors, coaches. They're opening a lot of doors for me. We want to have people connect here and discover what they're doing and then advance. The students, when they become involved, when they join student organizations, they do make lifelong friendships. It's good to get out there and realize what you want. I really like that Macomb offers the university center. It's pretty unique. I've never seen anything like that before. We're very diverse, and we're the only community college in the country with a medical school on the campus. I think many people that have questions as to where do they want to go with life, what do they want to do with life, Macomb is a great start.
Nine Michigan colleges and universities are making huge investments in partnership with Macomb Community College. Macomb Community College doesn't just provide degrees, they provide resources that are usually only available at much larger universities. The college is heavily engaged in supporting the automotive and defense industries and have demonstrated capabilities to serve emerging needs. I want to thank the president of Macomb Community College, Dr. Jim Jacobs, for his visionary leadership. He's taking a unique approach to marketing Macomb's premier institution of higher education. Our continuing support of education at every level is important in the quality of life in Macomb and the growth of employment opportunities. Macomb County will continue to be known for the things we make, but I think there is an untapped resource that I believe will redefine our lives here in Macomb County. It's called the New Blue Economy Initiative. As a young boy, I was fortunate, had an opportunity to have some grandparents that had a cottage up north in Lake Ogama. It was a two and a half hour drive to get there, but I couldn't wait to go there on weekends during the summer months. I'd crawl out of my skin because I got to swim, I got to fish, I got to walk along a sandy beach, run through the trails, and I also had an opportunity to canoe and kayak down the Rifle River and the Asaba River. But little did I know that same opportunity or excitement was right here in my own backyard. I was exposed to it through a job opportunity after working for the Sheriff's Department. Working as a dispatcher, we had an opportunity to work overtime out on Lake St. Clair in the Marine Patrol. That's all they had to tell me was for extra money you could work out there and that was my incentive. Well, when I took that ride in the direction they pointed me, the end of South River Road, I'm driving down South River Road, looking to the left, and I see this great mass body of water flowing through the town. And as I finally get to that end, Harley Enzyme Point, I'm overlooking this ocean. Oh, sure, they call it Lake St. Clair. They won't call it a great lake, but it is our great lake. It is a great lake, and it is the urban center of the Great Lakes waterway system. Why? Because of the swimming, the boating, the dining, the fishing, the marinas. It is the busiest freshwater lake in the entire country during the summer months. And the Clinton River. If you think about cities and towns, everyone likes to have a main street in their town. And the reason for that is economic development, gathering places. It's a unique feature within each one of those municipalities. There are some towns and cities, whether in the state or outstate, that will create opportunities of waterways through their towns. But the Clinton River, is our mainstream Main Street. It flows right through the heart of Macomb County. I have to believe our Great Lakes and our tributaries are underutilized for both recreation and economic development. This is why I created the New Blue Economy Initiative. With the task of growing this vision, I dedicated one of our senior resource development specialists to the New Blue Economy Initiative. And I also created a Water Resource Advisory Council made up of subject matter experts who are working with our specialists. Together, their three core issues are water quality, water access, and water attractions. Can you imagine maybe a whitewater rapids attraction in the Clinton River? Or how about one of my favorite thoughts, maybe a paddle palooza day where everybody gets in their kayaks and their, their inner tubes and they start floating down the river from Yates Cider Mill, say to Mount Clemens or beyond, right into Lake St. Clair. How about some campsites, liveries, parks, hike and bike trails along our riverbanks or our 31 miles of coastline here in Macomb County? Can you imagine not having to send our Boy Scouts and our Girl Scouts and our school kids and even our families to travel north two and a half hours to enjoy these same resources or opportunities that are right here in our own backyard? Can you imagine an institute of freshwater studies at Macomb Community College? Or how about some big events? How about a world-class hockey winter classic on Lake St. Clair? Or maybe even a fleet of tall ships at Metro Beach to commemorate the 200th anniversary of the War of 1812? Or what about a prestigious bass tournament right on Lake St. Clair, which by the way, is known and recognized for having the best fishing, not only in the Great Lakes, but in the entire Midwest. Well, guess what? You don't need to imagine those big events. They're coming. And they're coming because Lake St. Clair is the urban center of the Great Lakes waterway system. Our new Blue Economy Initiative fits right into the branding of Pure Michigan. 
and it will help us drive not only recreation but tourism and opportunities right here in Macomb County. As a young boy growing up in the city of Warren, as a college student and graduate of Macomb Community College, as a proud law enforcement officer for 30 years, as a community leader, my whole life has been Macomb County. As county executive, it is my responsibility and privilege to expand and promote the quality of life we enjoy here. We all honor our family's heritage and diversity as immigrants, the hard work, self-sufficiency, making things, making them better. We are the world epicenter of automotive technology and manufacturing, and we are reinventing ourselves as leaders in defense and advanced manufacturing. We have great potential with a new blue economy that can enrich our lives in Macomb and drive a whole new industry of recreation and tourism. We have so much going for us. More people want to live here. Businesses are making some huge investments in our infrastructure. It's time to tell the rest of the world about Macomb. Our new charter gives me the responsibility of marketing and promoting Macomb County. To me, it's not just a responsibility. It's a passion. It's part of the reason why I signed up for this job and why marketing Macomb is one of my top priorities. I know you have as much passion for this county as I do. So I want you to join me in this mission. I want you to help me define our unique values and our qualities that are unique to the Macomb brand. Help me promote all of our assets that contribute to the rich quality of life we enjoy here. Help me speak loud and proud about why we live, work, play, raise a family, invest, and grow our businesses here. Together, we can make these messages a very powerful invitation for people and businesses everywhere. Macomb County, 27 cities, townships, and villages. From East Point to Memphis, Romeo to New Baltimore. 458 square miles of where you want to be. It's a place where your children can grow, and so can your business. Macomb County's tree-lined borders contain over 12,000 acres of parkland. Its outer edge, 31 miles of freshwater shoreline, both filled each year with countless concerts, festivals, and family reunions. It's the birthplace of advanced technologies that not only instruct future generations, but protect them. Hey, and those are just facts. You can get that from the internet or a book. No. To truly understand what Macomb County is all about, you need to experience it. You need to live here. You need to work here. When you do that, you'll know your home. Make Macomb your home. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here this evening, and I want to wish everyone a happy and safe holiday season. Thank you very much, and we'll see you later on. Afterwards, Clinton Township Supervisor Robert Cannon discussed the county executive's comments. Don Turline, you just heard Mark Hackle give the first state of the county address with our new form of government. Very upbeat. You're a big part of Clinton Township and a big part of Macomb County with 7,000 full-time students at your Baker College campus right here in our community and right here in our county. What a wonderful speech. And he had every great point about Macomb County. It is truly a great place to live. And I think his discussion about education, about manufacturing, the future of Macomb County was right on. He just did a really marvelous job. For his first presentation to the community, I was very impressed. I was impressed with not only the way he presented it, but the, the content. He's, he's building upon the assets that we have here that we've always known that we've had, like the rivers and, and Lake St. Clair and the colleges and, and everything else that we have going for us and our new mall here in Clinton Township. And he, he put it all together very nicely. I think that uh, there's a real good advantage for Clinton Township in this whole process of growth with the river and the, some of the things that he's talking about with uh, maybe having restaurants and uh, the ability to use our uh, resources that we currently have to do great things. And you just couldn't do anything but walk away really excited about what he had to say today. And uh, I'm looking forward to working with him. And I'm looking forward, of course, working with you and the wonderful job that you do in Clinton Township. It was just a very, very exciting night. 
And it is a great community. We are growing. We have our struggles right now with some of the housing market. That someday will turn around and we'll be back to where we, we need to be. Correct. Well, we're moving that way and we're excited. Uh, Baker College is excited to be a very important part of Clinton Township. We're excited to be in part of Macomb County and we just want to do everything that we can to help move this partnership forward and uh, do great things in the community. Exactly, and that's what Mark is talking about. We have so many hidden things, such as Baker College. Everyone knows there's a Baker College, but do they know that we have 7,000 full-time students who are coming here every day going to class, going to restaurants, buying gas, going to the drugstores, doing everything that we want them to do, and then getting jobs. You've, you've done a remarkable job with that. Well, thank you very much. And uh, we've grown in the community, and I think it's because of the tremendous leadership that we have, not only in Clinton Township, but in this community. And we've been very fortunate. Baker College has been very fortunate to be here. And our students are doing great. Our college is doing wonderful. And our faculty and staff are working hard and dedicating themselves. But we also want to thank Clinton Township because all the building that we have done, we've invested a little bit over $85 million in this last 10 years on our campuses. And we have come in front of Clinton Township many of time. And they've helped solve problems for us. They've helped taking care of Baker College and have helped us get to where we are today. And we're very grateful for that. And we're lucky to have you. It's a great partnership. Continued success. Thanks a lot. Wonderful talking with you. I'm with Tony Morocco, who is no stranger to Clinton Township. You are Clinton Township and also now Macomb County. You're our drain commissioner. You've been for a long time. Tony, you do a wonderful job. And Joey West, who's a leader here in Clinton Township. But you've done a lot of other things outside of the community, and we'll get to that in a second. Tony, this was Mark's first attempt at the State of the County address, and he did a wonderful job. What are some of the impressions that you've come away with? Uh, I think Mark's a wonderful leader. I think he's grasped the, uh, the executive uh, job, what's entailed to sell the county, uh, get the budget balanced, which he did immediately, and that's one of the first things he should do, and he did. I was surprised how quickly he did that, and then the next year, going to like a business plan two, three years into the future with it. Uh, it's easier to plan in a way, but the fact he's out there selling the county, and I think that's what the county exec has to do, has to you know, attract business into here, has to attract people to move into the county and show them all the wonderful things we have to offer. And, and coming from me, that's very important because you not only help run the county, but you have been a business for many years and have known the importance of planning down the road. Yeah, you have to plan down the road, otherwise the business is never going to function properly and you get in a lot of trouble. Exactly. And Joey, it was nice to hear all the nice things about the county, and a lot of those nice things were right here in Clinton Township. Right here in Clinton Township, especially with the college and bringing MSU's College of Osteopathic Medicine here, that's a, a big coup. Which you were a very big part well, of. Thank you. I um. Born and raised in East Lansing, it's something um, the people over in East Lansing, they have no clue what a gym this is. Right here with the lakes, I mean, they talk about Lake Lansing, and that's a mud puddle compared to what we have here. So it's really, it's, it, this is a great county, and I think Mark is a good leader, and he really will promote it. And the fact that we have the three branches of the Clinton River, Tony, which you take care of yes. for us, well, running right through the community, meeting up over there by our beautiful park. And it's a very clean river, let me tell you, Bob. And the lake is clean. Sometimes there's uh, you know, erroneous stories written in newspapers. Uh, you can't believe everything you read, but right. it's clean. The water's very clean. It's the cleanest it's ever been. I've lived on the Clinton River since 1969 myself. And uh, at that time, the river was a little bit dirty. There were you know, oil slicks going down there and everything, but that's, that was, you know, what, 40 years ago. Now it's clean, and uh, I wouldn't be afraid to go swimming in there, regardless of what anybody says. No, no, there's a lot of that going on, and a lot yeah. of fishing going on. Right. And oh, yeah. with Mark's vision, I think there's going to be a lot more. My husband and I have kayaks, and we kayak down the Clinton River. It's awesome. It really is. It's beautiful. It's nice looking at the, yeah. even looking at the houses, being able to wave to the, the people who live on the river, and it's really nice. Yeah, and there's just one more thing to it. Yeah, the main thing problem seems to be access to it, you know. Mm -hmm. If you want to look at Lake St. Clair, there's very few public access points. So it's all owned by property, uh, private property owners, so it's, it's hard to really to even see the lake as you drown down, drive down Jefferson or Lakeshore. Uh, same with the river. You know, a lot of private owners on, on the river, so it's hard to get access. You know, you got Bud Park, which is wonderful. You can get down to Shady, uh, Shady Lane Park, I believe it's called. Shadyside, Shadyside Park, yeah, in uh, Mount Clemens. Two good access points. Thanks to you and many others, we now control most of the property along the rivers in Clinton Township. A lot of it floodplain, of course, right. but it is recreational, oh, personified. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And to come to Clinton Township and do the walk between Canal Park to Bud Park, and just right there on the river, it's beautiful. Don, Absolutely beautiful. Green walk. If the you don't Don see Green a deer way. or two uh -huh. when you walk that every time, oh. yeah. 
That's Which, right. But bring we, some uh, mosquito spray with you too. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> we're in we're in good shape. So let's just keep moving ahead. And Tony, we're glad you're at the helm and enjoy continued success Thank with you. Thank you. Thank you very well, much. Well, I wish I had one thing. All right. To the uh, residents of Clinton Township, I've known uh, Mr. Cannon here for quite a few years, and I got to tell you, he is by far the best supervisor that Clinton Township has ever had, and probably one of the best I've ever met in Cone County. Thank you, Tony. Coming from you, that means a lot. Thank you very much. Let's keep moving ahead. Okay. We will. Very good. Thank you, Joy. Thanks.